We're going to do a hard segue. The hardest of hard segues. Do it. I'm so Because I have to. Yes. Because there was a trend on Twitter. My friends, I give you Jenk Uger oh, no. of the Young Turks claiming he could beat Joe Rogan in a fight. All right. Okay, Next think, MMA what? celebrity just, match. Just, uh, <laughs> just for everybody, you know, uh, Jenk is an overweight, progressive uh, YouTube host. And Joe Rogan is not only an MMA commentator, but he used to fight MMA. Black and belt. he trains and he has a gym. Mm. And he is massively ripped. But we have this tweet. Mr. M says, I'll make a $1,000 donation to your trash network or your, or your charity of choice to see you call Rogan, who is not only the most successful podcast in history, but also a black belt in MMA, a loser to his face. And Jank Uger said, deal. Easiest $1,000 I've ever made. You think he's going to assault me? Sure, whatever. That's incredibly dumb, but also wouldn't work. I'm much larger than Joe, and I've fought my whole life. I'd end him. <laughs> but grown-ups don't do that. I'll send you the P.O. box to send the check later. I'll end him? <laughs> this is, wow, a whole new level of stupid. But come on, man. Is this, is this, this is the political discourse we get in this country? Yes. Let me, let me, let me pull up. We got, we got another tweet here. Let me see if it loads. Jen Kuker says, if Joe Rogan believes the government is violating your bodily autonomy, is, that the government violating your bodily autonomy is tyranny, then he must be furious about anti-choice Christian mullahs in his country. If he isn't, then he's an effing hypocrite, sucking up to his right-wing audience out of either stupidity or cowardice, except I'm pretty sure Joe Rogan is pro-choice, yeah. pro-UBI, pro-Bernie Sanders. This is what these people don't get. Cenk Uger is plastic. He represents the, the, the non-player character that dominates our pol political discourse. I, for instance... Pro-choice. Vax mandates are wrong because it's a liberty-minded approach, not a traditional value-minded approach. But Gent doesn't know or care. And so the parent factions, the, the Democrats and the Republicans, now the Republicans mostly not so much because Trump really just splattered that whole party, changing it very uh, different nowadays. But the establishment Democrats only seem to recognize dichotomies. So Jen Kuehler goes on his show and says... Either you agree with us, you're, you're on our side, or no matter what else, you're wrong. Even if what you're saying is scientifically true or factually correct, doesn't matter. And so they'll come out and it just, what's the point of this tweet? Jen, did you just watch Joe Rogan's podcast? Well, this is, I mean, this is the point of the tweet. Do we talk about it on, on TV? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but, but good. I'm, you know, I understand that and I'm fine with it. You know why? We need to explain to people who are watching, give them something they can share and say, my friends, you deserve actual political debates. What Jenk is saying here most likely is driven by, I, I will say Hanlon's razor, never attribute to malice, that which can be uh, explained by incompetence or attributed to incompetence. Perhaps he's just not that smart. However, Jenk Uger runs a multi-million dollar network that's massive and you need to have abilities and passion and drive to do something like that. So that says to me, Jenk knows he's misleading his audience. He knows he's pushing trash to, to fill their minds with garbage that will not move this country forward. I, Rogan's a black belt in jujitsu, I believe. Yeah, I, I, think he, so. I know he's a kickboxer. I don't know if he practices, yeah. but I mean, I think Chenk just doesn't understand that if he's really being serious here. Okay. It sounds like he's like a high school athlete who's like in their 30s or 40s and is a little overweight and still talks about how badass they are. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Chang. I don't know. Maybe he's, he's a, a great fighter. Buster. I don't know. He's a union buster. Yeah, he Dude, they, See, this is the problem we have. Hypocrite. The young, the, the young Turks are on YouTube TV. They're propped up by YouTube. They have massive investment, and they are as fake as they come. This is this is. is they are so fake. I used to love him, man. And then in the 2007, 2006, they were like speaking out against the war in Iraq. He was revolutionary in a good way. It's mm -hmm. not even. I, I, it's look. I don't know if you've seen this, but have you noticed a change in people? Like something changed. Yeah. People like 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 Jenk, for instance. You know, uh, uh, I've known him for a long time, and not like the friends or anything, but you know, I've, I've he had me on a show a couple times. I saw him at uh, VidCon several years ago, and he walked up and he was like, "Hey, how's it going?" We shook hands and we talked about YouTube and metrics. And I was doing my YouTube channel and I was doing what I was doing. And then two years later at Politicon, he's screaming in my face just like screaming at me. And I'm like, why are you yelling at me? Like, dude, what's going on? I should clarify, Joe's not a kickboxer, Taekwondo. That's what I meant to say, uh, Taekwondo. Oh, really? He's yeah. Taekwondo? He, he, he won a uh, tournament like in his late teens, early 20s. And then he kind of got out of the game after that. He's getting hit in the head too much. Dude I think. is ripped. Yeah, yeah he's a maniac. He, is. he loves yeah. working out. But so so something happened to people, man. And I, I, don't, I don't know what. Yeah, I'm not, this isn't like a strong explanation, but I think part of it does have to do with 
social media uh, and the way that it's sort of like I, 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 to me that matches up with the timeline of like the politics has gotten much more divisive like Democrats and Republicans have moved away from the middle and are like much more outside of the middle but have you seen the Pew research the the, the trends on this or yeah it's Democrats yeah. not Republicans Republicans are slightly more moderate I thought it was Democrats more than Republicans but Republicans also did it Re- Republicans shifted leftward a great deal from like you know during the 2000s into the early 2010s yeah and then moved only a little bit to the right okay so depending on what time frame you're using but based on where Republicans were in the 90s and the 2000s, they're actually much further left than, yeah, than they yeah. traditionally had been. I mean, been. they're progressives driving the speed limit and went on and so on. But right, like, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, so, but it definitely does like, it incentivizes conflict. It discourages us seeing uh, the other side. Uh, I, and it's also like created this phenomenon where like, we're living in these like separate realities where they're like, you know, who is, who is like, who are these people that both sides still trust? You know, there's basically no one. None. So my favorite was, uh, I mentioned this for, many of you may have heard this, but I'll just, you know, just so you know, when I went on Russell Brand's show and he asked me, uh, I was on Russell Brand's show, he asked me about civil war. And, you know, I typically view this as people are like, they think they're going to get me as though like I'm some shock jock being like civil war and like bang on the table. When I'm actually like going through all of the details, the Princeton professor, the Atlantic articles, the, the conversations around Thucydides' trap and what it means, fourth and fifth generational warfare, all of these very like, you know, specific examples of why we are facing some kind of civil conflict. Then you've got, I'm like, first and foremost, we had two shootouts in the Pacific Northwest between the left and the right. I mean, that's kinetic conflict. It's been going on for years and getting worse. And then you have the storming of the Capitol and all this stuff. The comment section was hilarious. People on the right saying Tim's a leftist. People on the left saying Tim's right wing. <laughs> and I'm like, well, there you go. Yeah. There, there's no middle there isn't. for any real conversation. But the interesting thing is libertarians are kind of like in the middle because they're like, all I care about is freedom. Do you care about freedom? So I suppose I'll put it this way. When I look at uh, when we have libertarians on the show with conservatives, they, they agree on, on, on so much. But the libertarians on the left do not agree. And the conservatives and liberals do not agree. And it really does feel like the overwhelming majority of the left, as we describe it, be it establishment or leftist, is authoritarian, masquerading as libertarian because no one will come out and claim to be an authoritarian. No one will do it. It's not going to win you any favors. But then you see people like Hassan Piker, you know, you see the Young Turks, you see Vosh in favor of rule by edict, the president issuing a decree and then everyone being forced to, to adhere to it, and they're celebrating it. That's the definition of authoritarianism. Yeah, what's the, does everyone know the dude quote? I can never do it right. Like, when I'm weaker than you, I ask for you to follow the principles. And then when I'm stronger than you, like, when I, I, I don't adhere to the principles because it's good good for me. I'm, I'm yeah, I'll quote. look it up. But, that, but that's, a, that's exactly what the, uh, that's exactly the phenomenon. And I don't, I don't know how much of it is, like, conscious. I think part of it is that, like, human beings are deceitful to themselves. And so, like, when they're on the on the losing side and the underside, they have this, like, genuine feeling that principles ought to be important. And when they're on the winning side and the dominant side, they have this feeling that, I don't know, principles don't matter. Like, what matters is accomplishing my objective. Right? I have the, uh, the Dune quote from Frank Herbert, the writer, Children of Dune. When I'm weaker than you, I ask for freedom because that is according to your principles. But when I'm stronger than you, I take away your freedom because that mm-hmm. is according to... To mine. To mine. To mine. To my <laughs> it cut yeah. me up. To my principles. Yeah. Sorry, I got cut off in the middle. That was yeah. a little anticlimactic. So yeah. pop up. <laughs> but I think I think that's like the phenomenon. You know. We need a new word. Jeez. Yeah. Um, a lot. Of, you know. So the the right says communism. The left says capitalism. There's a corruption element there. The left says fascism. We need a new word. You know what's happening is a new type of prior pri- um, proprietary technocracy. Kind of, but that doesn't explain. It, it, it does, I think, cover a lot of what's happening. But, uh, you know, you look at what's happening with authoritarianism, rule by edict. How does proprietary, tech- proprietary technocracy explain Joe Biden saying, I hereby decree? Because he can reach a, a trillion people, a million people with once with radio. He uses technology to like, that's what Hitler did too. He was a technocrat. Yeah, but radio is 150 years old or whatever. Yeah, Hitler did so, it a lot. He right, right, right. So that's always I, I, convincing people with mass media. It's not a proprietary technology. If he didn't have the ability to stand up and say it, and everyone hears it on TV, I don't think that we it would have that kind of impact. It's 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 technocracy is the government control of a society by technical experts. Yeah. So we we certainly have yeah, a tech Twitter banned the sure, Hunter sure, sure. Biden thing. But and that then doesn't explain Joe Biden Joe coming Biden. out. That doesn't explain Joe Biden coming out with an edict 
and then everyone just adhering. It was to on it. my Twitter page when I loaded Twitter for like five days. Did yeah. you know that what he did isn't illegal? <laughs> yes, yeah. they're serving. legal experts say. So that's, yeah. that's why I'm saying we need a new They've word. They've usurped the government. We are seeing is in an those... element of big tech corporations wielding their power, but it's not so much the technology. Mass media has been around for a long time. It is. You have the private sector and the, and, the, and the public sector have merged, which some people might say is fascism. Yeah. But fascism is also like traditionalist and nationalistic. So that doesn't explain what they are. They're, 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 it's, so we need a word that represents global corporatism with state, you know, yeah, global government corporatism. Mm -hmm. A word for all of that in one thing. G Do you hear me yeah, typing? <laughs> See if anything Jerkism. comes up. I just typed Jerkism. it in. Global yes. government cor corporatism. Corporatism goes global. Corporatism goes global. Yeah. You've got private corporations working in collusion with the state under the under the, the uh, mask uh, under the guise of democracy towards a, a a a you know global international new world order. Is that what they said? Is that what Lori <laughs> Lightfoot said? I don't know. That's what that Australian lady said. So communism means something. Fascism means something. Capitalism means something. And so when you're trying to describe this, I hear all these different words thrown out, and it's like it doesn't capture the essence. It's definitely a corporatism. Like we were talking about earlier with contracts, if a company has owns the rights to your likeness, and then they start building artificial intelligence, generative deepfakes, and can make you look real and say whatever they want forever, that's like you're a, a digital slave to a corporation. So like Disney owns the rights to Thor. They can make Chris Hemsworth's face say anything they want on a cartoon or on a TV show now. Do you think it's all driven by corporations? No, it's it's what's happening is there's a, a very dense, powerful corporate uh, centralization of power that is colluding with a very dense centralization of government power. To, and, and, and it's and, and it's it's authoritarian. It's detrimental to the working class, to the people. It's exploitative. It's it enslaves. It is overtly authoritarian. And so What's the word? I, I, you know, I typically would say the lucrative merger of corporation and state would be fascism, Mussolini's fascism. But then you get all sorts of arguments about the fascists were traditionalists. They were like, you know, women, you know, at the home. And that's not what these people are. These people are ultra progressives, but they're not communists because they, be, they, they work with corporations. So it's like Chinese state capitalist, like it's, it's Chinese yeah. communist capitalism. It's like woke neoliberal corporatism. But there should so, be just one. Yeah, no, word. obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say naming. I'm going to say techno technocracy final answer, because without the social media, none of this could be happening. Was, right now. was fascism? Oh, that's not true, Ian. Without the government, the Twitter wouldn't have the legal protections to make it happen. Oh, without, 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 without the government, Twitter could do whatever it wanted without the Democrats coming in. So when 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 Congress comes in and gives special protections to the tech industry, they're then able to propagandize. Yeah, I, I, do, I do. I will say I think a lot like a lot of big tech is protected by federal laws like I, I was talking to you about this before the show i'll talk about this idea maybe a little bit now about like there is an ability to be, to like there a technical ability but not a legal one to embrace and extend these platforms where you build like a facebook 2 you log into it with your facebook credentials and it gives you everything in facebook one plus more and when you comment on facebook 2 it, it backports to facebook one for the people who are still on there and and so on and this is a way that we could evolve our way out of the status quo so we wouldn't be trapped in this equilibrium that that no one is happy with it's laws that stop these things from being built so the big tech companies use laws to shut down competitors i mean the fact that and i mean you know ip is a big one you know you're still ten dollars you know apple owns rounded black corners you know uh, oracle uh I, I, don't, I think they ended up losing the case, but it went on for 10 years where Oracle potentially owned the set of Java APIs, which made it so that you know you couldn't be competitive with phones. There, there's the uh, com Computer Fraud Anti-Abuse Act. This is a big one that a lot of people don't know about. Um, it says like basically unauthorized access to a computer is a federal crime. And what these big tech companies do is they say, well, if you're scraping public data, and we tell you to stop, you're now violating the CFAA, and that's a, a, a federal crime. They don't even need to tell you to stop. Yeah. The government just literally yeah. says, yeah, we decided it's a crime. Yeah, but this kills PadMapper, if anyone remembers that yeah, service. That? Yeah, that, got, that was illegal. It was, uh, it was it was showing apartments on a map. So you yeah. could pull up a map, and it would show you listings for rentals. Yeah. There was a, there was a, there was a, a small company. It was like one guy. He built this service where if Southwest changed their flight fees, it would tell you, because if you call Southwest when they lower the price of the flight, they'll give you the money back, but you have to contact them. Mm. And Southwest said, stop scraping our site, and if you don't, we're going to call the FBI. So you can't look up our, price I guess, data, our public price data. Uh, you know, a government, 
mis, mis, misappropriation of government can, can stifle innovation, but no government allows corporations to send armed men into the other startups and, and kill everyone in the building and then make sure that no one starts up. Well, all right. So that, I mean, that's a, that's a much different debate as to like how, how would, how do, you know, how would these competing interests play out in terms of violence? And I'm not going to, if we want to do the like end cap versus minarchy debate, we can do it. But I think that's separate from like, we can assume a minarchy or so we can assume there's some small government that stops the companies from doing that. But if they didn't have these additional laws that they, they, they were allowed to leverage to shut down their competitors, I actually think competition would be more yeah, robust. Yeah, I think they're right about that. Now. Big time, actually. So, mm. what's our Repeal word? the CFAA. Build, build an no island in the middle of the Pacific. Pacific. We could build islands and live on them. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm an optimist. Like, I think... I think, and this is why the world is getting better despite government getting worse. Entrepreneurs always win. Human creativity always wins. Human ingenuity, the ability for humans to be creative, to come together, to work together, to come up with novel solutions. Like, I, I think it's why the world continues to get better. And I think it's why I think we'll get out of where we are with the big tech stuff. Part of what's frustrating about it is it takes time. It takes time for the new solutions. I mean, you've had minds on, you're having me on, uh, you know, and I'm, I, I run library and uh, which also owns Odyssey. And, you know, these things, they're getting big. Odyssey grew from nothing to 40 million people a month in a year, you know? Like, and it just takes time to grow to a billion people, no matter how fast you're growing. What do you think about federating mines and library? Yeah, I would, I'm, I'm all for interoperability. Uh, and, you know, and that's part of the beauty of all this stuff. And, and it, when everything is open source, when everything is permissionless, we're able to innovate so much faster. And I think all of the creative energy, like, you know, Google, Google's a zombie, man. Mm. Like the, the smartest, most creative people, they don't want to work at Google. They don't want to work under a culture where you have to adhere to a woke ideology. And if you don't, you're going to lose your job. They don't want to sit through three hours of diversity and inclusion workshops a week and have to go through all that training and have to put, you know, pronouns in their signature and all this stuff. I'm not saying none of them do, but most of them don't. I was thinking last night, Google, is it just that it's too big? It's it, part of it's that it takes just such a long time. Look, I mean, IBM has been like sleepwalking for more than a decade, and it's still such a large company. Mm. Um, it, it, you know, look, it, it doesn't usually happen overnight where some startup takes down the incumbent. And so when you're going through that five to 10 year reality, which is how long it actually takes for these things to play out, it feels really slow and it feels like it's never going to happen. But I think it's happening. I think it's happening right now. I think we're under, going through It's like it. a constant a resurgence and, and then it, it falls away and, and fertilizes the soil where new things appear. Yeah. With Google, I remember when Google Plus came out and they had YouTube and Google Plus and it was like, why didn't they just make YouTube the social network? They didn't. They, they were built, trying to. And then they had this company, this part you, of it running Google Plus YouTube and part of it running YouTube, YouTube and they didn't know what the other hand was doing and it was okay, a mess. All right. YouTube was trying to turn, uh, Google was trying to turn YouTube into Google Plus and it was backfiring bad. And it was causing a lot of problems. But the intent, it was happening, was that YouTube would be Google+. And then they were like, it's not working. Yeah. So it makes me think that it's too big, that, that you can't, it's just too much authority and too many levels of authority of things getting passed down that it's less effect, loses affectivity. Yeah. No, that's a, and that's a, such an important concept. And I think it's a, a mistake a lot of people make in their thinking is they think of like, oh, Google's like a coherent entity. Like, oh, the CEO just says stuff and then like things happen. It's like, you know, when you, and true of government, it's a true of large corporations. Well, no, but it's, it's a bunch of individual agents all with their own like local incentives. And a lot of times inside of the, the large thing, they're competing interests. They're competing branches of government that are at odds with one another. They're competing factions of Google that are at odds with one another. There's not an ability for one person to just issue some top-down order and then everything happens. And, and the most creativity, the best stuff happens when you have people with that bottom-up incentive where they believe in the mission and they want to do the right thing. Like very few jobs, especially creative work, can be like purely quantified where it's like you oh, produce your 40 widgets of stuff and we're going to win because we're producing 40 widgets of creativity per week and we're, you know, highly. It's not the way it works. It's not the way uh, true creation happens. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. where you can leave comments and super chat and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out. 
and we'll see you all next time.